Hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, today I found some time to be sitting here before going to work. <laughs> Avoiding to do commuting videos as I do not have any support platforms to get information from. Anyway, uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, some news. But th this is international news, but they are uh, in Portuguese. And they were um, published in the Portuguese CNN. And these news concern Russia. And lately, uh, the news concerning Russia on Portuguese media have been increasing in tone. Uh, this goes uh, along the lines of the patterns I've uh, mentioned in, in previous videos. That uh, whenever things get uh, warmer on the front lines in Ukraine... Uh, the uh, the mainstream outlets be begin to pump out a lot of news. Although this one is in Portuguese, I mean it's it's CNN. It's just a branch. And even if it wouldn't be CNN, uh, some other major Portuguese outlet, uh, you know who their bosses are. So let's dig right into it. Let me see if I don't screw this up. Okay. So I'll translate for you. Uh, it says uh, maneuvers that uh, uh, come near the ramming uh, or creating noise in the communications. This is some of the accusations. Russia uh, uh, operates in the waters of Portugal the same way they did in the cold back in the Cold War. <laughs> and then then it goes on that this. Uh, the the admiral that uh, is in charge of the Portuguese navy uh, told CNN that uh, the <laughs> the operation uh, of uh, Russian ships in Portuguese waters it's hostile. Uh, they say uh, the the phenomenon should increase the Russian presence in Africa. This this goes back also to a piece of news that I've mentioned previously which was uh, the big noise appearing in the Portuguese news concerning Russia extending its influence in Africa and now to uh, former Portuguese colonies. And you, you know what I, uh, what I think about that. I mean, I, I spoke previously about that, but this goes along those lines, along uh, that trend of thought, the trend of thought that uh, uh, they have no business in our empire <laughs> it, you understand this expression of course we no longer have an empire uh, and and that's a good thing but uh, the 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 kind of thought and mentality is still the same us this is a uh, this is good uh, this is a good dog whistle to to those who uh, who are very proud of their history and of the old glories of the Portuguese uh, empire. Good for propaganda. So they go, it goes on saying uh, dangerous approaches in uh, territorial Portuguese waters, uh, maneuvers that uh, uh, risk other ships, attempts to interfere in communications of the Navy are some of the actions uh, that most common that uh, officials um, uh, that officials face when following foreign ships, right? Like, for example, Russian ships uh, that have been uh, uh, crossing the, the Portuguese territorial waters. Uh, it, they go on and say that uh, it, this results in unpleasant situations. And then goes on. This last Wednesday, in an interview to uh, a couple of uh, Portuguese outlets, this admiral, which is which is in, in charge of the Portuguese uh, navy, uh, has uh, has underlined uh, that the the missions of accompanying Russian uh, ships uh, done by the air force and the navy, the Portuguese navy in Portuguese waters has quadrupled uh, 
and uh, and then from this increase in the number of missions, uh, these occurrences as have also increased, which could be, according to his words, an escalation. Look, I have to. It really one needs some patience for this because I don't know what this. This is a Portugal official, right? It's uh, it's. Um, He is in a very uh, responsibility place, a military place, and he is like uh, stretching his feathers. So say, I'm not saying flex flexing his muscles because Portugal does not have military power to project, but stretching his feathers. I I, I think it should be more uh, adequate f for this. And the thing is that even if this. Uh, kind of uh, provocations or small incidents occur, I do think that they are more normal than they are referring here, and they are just uh, making a big fuss about nothing. Like we see in Portugal, they are doing a, a, a storm on a glass of water. <laughs> and uh, and uh, the thing is that... Uh, Russian ships are especially monitored when they uh, go through our waters. And sometimes they don't like and they do some provocative uh, actions. But uh, it doesn't go into any details. Notice that. And so we don't really know if this is like a, this is like a piece of news that is uh, ordered by someone or if this is really true, or if this, is, or if this really represents uh, the reality, or even if it represents some reality, if it represents any real danger. I don't think so, because remember that uh, Russia never had a beef with Portugal. Never, never. And... Uh, and Portugal, since the the since the invasion of Russia into Ukraine, has been aligning aligning with every position uh, that the U.S., NATO, the European Union tells it to to do. We are not a sovereign country, and this is the result of it. We are not allowed to follow our our policy, and the people's uh, the the people in charge of. Uh, important places, like, for example, chief of the army, the chief of the armada, uh, of the navy, of the air force, they tend to be people that replace, uh, I should say, competent and thoughtful people, and they have to replace them by these uh, yes-men, uh, people that just uh, reproduce exactly the propaganda that are told by Washington, and by the European Union in this case, and it it even but it even goes on uh, uh, to say, uh, it, it, remember that I've said I've mentioned that uh, it uh, reminds us of the times of the Cold War. <laughs> so it's just like a, an intimidation process on the side of intentional intimidation process on the side uh, of Russia. Um, the 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 crossing of Portuguese waters by the Russian ships has been uh, uh, progressively more frequent since the invasion of Ukraine. Uh, three years ago, the number of uh, ships that we accompanied, uh, that we escorted, uh, was inferior to uh, um, ten a year. Only last year, but only last year, just last year, we have made 46 such missions. Uh, this year, 2024, we already made 14, says the Admiral, uh, underlining that the, these ships of the Russian Federation can uh, go through our waters in, in the sense of going uh, to position A from, uh, from position A to position B. Uh, so this means that they cannot like just stay and anchor in our waters, but they can go through them to go wherever they need to go. 
but then the guy goes in and hints that uh, maybe they have some interest in our waters. You see, this is this is what I mean. This is war mongering. This is the kind of news that are made to uh, to throw gasoline to the fire, to make people uh, fearful. One and two, to make people angry and to make people accept uh, any future war aggression that might develop. And why do I say this? Because this same admiral, this guy here, has this statement uh, some days ago. Uh, a couple of days ago, actually. If Europe would be attacked and NATO demands, we will die wherever we have to die to defend it. It's some harsh words. I think the guy is uh, feeling quite brave. Of course, he's not the one that would go die. Uh, it's just that if we... Uh, the, the question remains, we who? Uh, certainly, as a Portuguese citizen, uh, I do not follow this trend of thought, this line of thought, and I, would, uh, I wouldn't go to die for the US empire anywhere. And this is, this is a statement. Simply as that. And I think anyone who would do that would be pretty stupid. But I guess that maybe it would be a good thing to maybe purge some stupidity. You know, like NAZI purge in Ukraine. I think that happened a lot due to the front lines. Although many of them, they know, they, 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 they are very violent and... They like aggression, but they, when they smell the danger, they know how to be retracted, and normally they stay in these punishment battalions instead of doing the fighting at the front lines. The ones that did, most of them are already dead. And so uh, this is the kind of rhetoric coming from this guy. And the thing is, uh, we don't need... We, as Portuguese, we don't need this kind of uh, relations uh, with Russia. There was a, a recent statement by Maria Zaharova saying that uh, Portugal has been uh, unilaterally very hostile to Russia uh, the, uh, following the complaints of the Russian embassy uh, to their own government. Uh, and I, I, I really don't like the way this is heading. Because, like I said before, we what we need is uh, cooperation between countries and de-escalation of tensions. And we don't need some guys who sit in very comfortable positions to be telling us that we need to go and, and die for the U.S. interests or the U.S. empire. I mean, this is uh, uh, pretty unacceptable. And this is utter hypocrisy because... Remember that we are supposed to be on the side of the Democrats, people who uphold peace, who uphold freedom and all those good things that everyone likes. And yet we are uh, sounding the drums of war. And a country like Portugal, it really doesn't, uh, this doesn't really reflect the sentiment of the Portuguese people. And, uh, and uh, also... Uh, uh, when I was uh, back when I was in Russia, every time I told people when they asked me where I was from and I told I was Portuguese, immediately I, I had a very warm, uh, welcome feeling. And so I know that it, it doesn't reflect the, the relations between the people. Uh, I, we have to notice that in Portugal we have a substantial uh, Russian and also Ukrainian community. And for example, concerning this special military operation, the, the Ukrainians are not unanimous. Uh, I have met several who are, of course, namely from the region of Lvov, Lviv, as you wish, uh, who are anti-Russian, but I also met uh, many of several ages uh, who are pro-Russian. And or even if they are not, they they do not share this anti-Russian sentiment. So it's kind of a divided community in that in that regard. And, and there there is even a tensions between because there's a, 
this one Ukrainian guy, supportive of Azov battalions and Aidar battalions and Svoboda Party, uh, Sloboda Party or Svoboda. I really uh, sorry if I'm butchering the name. The one with the three fingers. <laughs> sorry, three fingers. Uh, and. Uh, and he is like he's trying to uh, suppress any voice that uh, be might be favorable to Russian or the to Russia or the Russian narrative. And he even goes on in the news and is uh, he claims to be yeah well he is uh, the president of a self-proclaimed uh, association that represents the Ukrainian immigrants. Uh, of course, they exclude the ones that speak Russian. Uh, and they, he's been involved in some scandals uh, in uh, persecution of uh, of people that were trying to help their fellow uh, immigrants and refugees from the war. And just because they were they had Russian connections or they were Russians themselves, but they were doing this job because they spoke the language, they they could be uh, doing a great service in the Portuguese territory because uh, if you welcome refugees here, you don't expect the Portuguese to speak Russian or Ukrainian. And so you had some of these people that been living here, they speak the language, they were doing this uh, service, and they were accused of many ugly things, being spies for the Russian government and these kind of things. And these accusations were made by people as such as this guy named, actually his name is Pavlo Sadoha, uh, really fascist undercover. Uh, also the other day he, he tried to prevent the publication of a book of a journalist, of a Portuguese journalist that spent eight months in the Donbass reporting uh, pure journalistic work. And uh, because some of the things that he was telling was against the Kiev's narrative, this guy was organizing uh, protests in front of these uh, bookshops where the book was going to be presented to uh, against the presentation of the book. A very democratic stance, by the way, from the one who claims to be from the country that is defending democracy. And yeah, I just, uh, uh, I wanted to talk about this news and sorry if I extend myself on the conversation, on, on my thoughts, if I start rambling, that's really my way. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoy this video and enjoy videos like this, please uh, share what your thoughts on the comments and uh, click on that like button. Just uh, help me boost the channel a little bit because I'm I really, uh, lately I've been putting more hours to the channel than I was ever expected to put when I've started it. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it feels nice when you comment there and you put your like. And uh, of course, I'm not looking for big numbers, but if they happen, of course, they are welcome. I, I as always, see you on the next one.